Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and give this clip a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Unified English Braille. Um, people don't really <laughs> you understand. You just really want to get me yeah. started, don't you? <laughs> uh, people don't really understand how, well, first of all, they some people don't even know what Braille is. Second, they don't understand that there's multiple codes of it for one language. Can you speak to... Let's let's go for a general sense so people can you know who are listening can can get a, a general sense and let's not try to delve too deep into specifics. I mean, if you go that way, that's okay. I'm more than willing to talk. But can you speak to? I mean, uh, to to preface this, there's Unified English Braille, which is basically trying to, as I understand it, put two Braille codes together and um, change the actual standardizations of Nemeth, which is for math usually, and uh, literary, which is for writing. That's how I explain it to people. Can you speak to how that may be affecting people who have STEM jobs that are sight impaired. Okay. So we look at Braille, and, and it started out, everything was, you had text, and when we think back, text was basically just text, no pictures, no diagrams, none of these little side tables and little blocks here and there. And so we had, there was a code, which was a, a Braille literary code, and it was standard for the English language, for, well, we were North American, the British do it a little different. In fact, all over the world, they do they little do. Yeah, differences. It's a little, a little bit modified. Which, at the time, wasn't such a big deal. However, with the advent, then we had Nemeth Code, which was developed specifically for the sciences. And um, you have to understand how Braille is read, is that it's read one character our fingers only cover one character at a time. So in order to be efficient Braille readers, you contract everything. Therefore, we have what we call contracted Braille. It's kind of like writing shorthand. So also we have a memory system. And all the, this is all coming in, but what happened was we ended up with computers and the Internet. And then suddenly we have a global system. So now people over the, all over the world... Again, we're becoming a global community. We realize Braille wasn't accessible. Say our North American Braille wasn't accessible to English Braille readers, to somebody in Africa, to somebody in New Zealand. So they wanted to unify at least English language Braille, which made sense. Mm -hmm. um, but also we started with the Internet, and, and there was now a need for – we only have six dots, and they have to mean everything. They have to mean punctuation. They have to mean letters. Uh, they mean numbers or numerals. So, uh, all the math, uh, like operation signs, et cetera, et cetera. So they've, because they only have six dots, they've tried to reconfigure because now we have to have ways of writing internet um, – Oh, what do you call them? You know, me and my sort internet of, literacy. It's just the URLs, yeah. you know, anything you like are, that. Yeah, URLs and, and different it, yeah. things like and that. Then, and then yeah. now we have phones, mm -hmm. you know. And so what happened was it kind of ran out of dots. So when they tried to unify everything, they came up with a unified English Braille. And the problem is <laughs> they didn't – they sacrifice – what they're going, what, what's happened is they've sacrificed speed and efficiency and ease, particularly in, by taking away Nemeth code. And they're still doing research. And, what, and it's very interesting because I keep up with the research. And the research is we can, or you can, I can't, my memory's not that, that good. <laughs> but we have 15 seconds and you can memorize um, 10 or so characters. So when you're doing a math problem, because you have to remember it, we can't just glance down and see the whole problem like I can. Right. There is a scientific basis for how much you can remember and how many, and in the sequence, over a certain length of time. And there's a lot of people who disagree with the Unified English Braille for uh, STEM subjects, because it puts in too many extra characters, and you're not, you don't have that block anymore. So in the States, in Canada, they've adopted it as Unified English Braille. As that's what they want. However, in the States, who are so far ahead of us, 
they have not adopted it. It's still out. They still want Nemeth okay. on its own. And it's unfortunate because they had a code called Nubs, which was developed with Nemeth code, and it was a far easier system, <laughs> but they took unified English Braille, so... I, I, I've talked to you about this for countless hours, and as we close this tangent to move on to something else, um, you talked about how it wasn't so much uh, a hard hit for literary p- people who were had sight impairment who were doing things involving literary writing per se, but a lot of people who were in the sciences and, and technologies because if they're using Unified English Braille, which most of them don't, I've talked to a couple myself, then they're forced to use so many other characters and, and draw out their equations so much longer. Yes, and you get you get lost in, in it just takes longer, it takes more materials. Um, you can't, you don't have that block. It doesn't, it, you don't read math the same. It doesn't sound the same. Yeah. Like when, when we do math, that's why I just refuse to do it with you. <laughs> mm-hmm. That we stayed with our Nemeth code because it's just so much easier to deal with. And it's unfortunate because I think students coming up now will get so bogged down in the Braille code itself, they'll not want to take these subjects. Well, and that's, sure. my, and that's, uh, no, you, that's you, my irritation. Yeah, you don't want to de-incentivize it by making it unnecessarily hard difficult. or difficult. And, that, and that's kind of what's happened, is what's happening. And that's the argument for in the States, too, in the United States, that that's their big argument. And it's interesting because the people that want to keep Nemeth are the people using it. The people that go for Unified English Braille are the people that are producing the Braille two different things. And are the people producing the Braille fully sighted or are they? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) There's my other irritation. Uh The users are not getting what they want necessarily. So It's interesting that people who have full vision or most of their vision are dictating basically the direction and the, uh, the code that people who have the impairment, the sight impairment have to use. I, I, I don't understand But that's that. because we go into technology. So yeah. who are the ones running technology sure. and sure. developing the programs? Mm. They're the ones that have the sight. Craving even more disability content? Links to the full podcast episode and other great clips are only a tap or a click away just waiting for you in the description.